Okay, look, we all make mistakes, right? And one of the mistakes that I made this year was making a ton of stock of crocheted collars and then not selling any of them. These are my crocheted collars. I still think they're really cute. I'm gonna try not to hit my mic, but they just, I think it was a, an advertisement issue. If people had seen how cute they are on, they probably would have bought them, but they didn't. They were just sitting there on hangers and people couldn't get the vision. People didn't get the vision. I'm gonna keep one for myself, but now I just have like all this yarn taken up in crocheted colors and I need this yarn. I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna make myself something and it's gonna be really cute. And I'm gonna wear it all the time and think of all the people who should have brought Bob my crochet collars and didn't. Okay, um, first things first is I just need to frog all of these. So I need to take them all apart, which is annoying. It's a lot of work. And I put hours into these, but you know what? It's not gonna make it any better if I delay it. So let's get frogging. I had scissors. I wove these ends in so good. Now I do have to be kind of careful when frogging this yarn in particular because this is bulky yarn and it's not um, it's not twisted like some yarn like like yarn like this is cotton yarn and it's twisted so it's like really strong when you pull it but this yarn when you pull it too much it's not twisted it's like fibers it could well it's not going to do it now because I'm doing an example uh, but it could just sort of like pull right apart and I don't want that I want to have nice long yarn to work with so we're going to be careful it's also kind of fuzzy so it does catch sometimes and you'll find these little loopies on there and I'm just gonna snip those because it's gonna be easier than trying to pull them apart and wrecking the yarn so you'll see where the yarn sort of snags on itself and it makes these little loops that's where it's like been felting together and so those are the ones I'm just going to we're just gonna give those little connector hairs a little snip and it should go back to pulling out well. I should also be balling this as I go so that I don't have to do it all at the end. And hopefully balling it will help get some of these kinks out as well. It's not gonna really matter in the long run, but it'll just be easier to crochet with when there aren't kinks. I know there's ways that you can like wind it to make a cake right away, but um, it just make a ball. Okay, that is all my yarn unraveled. I am now going to go find a pattern. I think I'm gonna make a sweater vest and I've been saving a few patterns on Pinterest. So I'm going to go look at those and I think I might sort of amalgamate them into something that I made up, even though I've never made up a pattern before, but I am so delusional that I think I can do it. So got my yarn, gonna find a pattern, but we'll get to that uh, tomorrow because it's late now and I want a snack and I want to play Stardew Valley. So see you tomorrow. Okay, we are back in the basement. I am sitting on the floor because I want to be as close as possible to this little heater because it's freezing down here. It's so cold today. So I have been looking at all these different patterns for crocheted vests on Pinterest. If you go to my Pinterest and look at the crochet board, you'll see a ton of my inspiration there. So I think the vibe of the sweater vest that we're gonna make is it's gonna be open at the sides with like little ties because I wanna be able to adjust it because sometimes I wanna wear a sweater vest over like another sweater and these sweater vests are too tight for that so I'm gonna have ties on the side and then it's gonna be a fairly like boxy front so it's gonna be like the front panel that goes up and it'll just be like a straight sort of box and then we're gonna do short rows to make a sort of curved neckline and then we'll do the same thing on the back with just a slightly less um less exaggerated neckline so the front neckline will be like a little scoopier than the back neckline and then I'm hoping to add some ribbing along the sides and along the collar as well. And if all of that sounds like really tough, 
don't worry, I am incredibly mediocre at crocheting and I'm pretty sure I can do this. So if you're pretty mediocre at crocheting, you could probably do this too. And we're just gonna kind of make it up as we go along. I am gonna do a little swatch, which I don't always do, but I'm going to, to see sort of how many stitches go into say like five centimeters of fabric. And that way I can sort of calculate, okay, if I need it to be 20 centimeters across, then I can just multiply my stitches. So we'll do a quick test first and then we'll get into making the actual sweater vest. Okay, so I'm back with my swatch here. So I have five rows of double crochet. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, five rows of the double crochet. And then this is the ribbing over here. So that's done in single crochet. And it's actually worked like, like this once you're done. And now I just need to do math. This is 10 stitches across and um, it is five centimeters across for 10 stitches. And so then if I want it to be like, probably about, oh, minus the ribbing. The ribbing itself is like one and a half inches. So on each side, there'd be like three inches. So if I want the whole thing to be 15 inches, minus the three for the ribbing is 12. So I need 12 inches of the regular, <laughs> the regular double crochets. And so if, 10 stitches equals five inches, then 23 stitches will be approximately, I think that's right, about 23. Okay, so I'm gonna cast on 23 stitches and then, okay, no, I'm gonna cast on 24 stitches because two, I need two chains if I'm doing double crochet. Um, okay, so what did I just say? we're gonna cast on 24. And so we're gonna do this in two panels and do the ribbing after. So we're gonna do the first panel first. Now my next conundrum is I have three balls of gray and three balls of sort of oatmeal color. And I don't wanna get other ones, I wanna just use these. So maybe I do the front panel all in one color and the back panel all in the other color and then I could reverse it. So if I do my collar line, like I make the front collar and the back collar equal, then I could reverse it and I could have one that is gray dominantly and then oatmeal on the back and then one that is oatmeal on the front and gray on the back. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let's start casting on. I'm going to be using a 10 millimeter hook and then I'm going to be switching to a eight millimeter hook for the ribbing. Um, a nine would have been perfect, but we're just gonna try to go a little tighter with the 10 and then a little looser with the eight. So let's uh, get into it. Hey, it's future Danielle here. How are you doing? Uh, so past Danielle is going to go through the whole process of making this first panel and recording it step by step, but then she's gonna go off camera and make the second panel and make like a few minor adjustments. And she's gonna like those a lot better. So uh, then she's gonna be re-recording the whole front panel. So that's, uh, we're caught up now. You can join present Danielle uh, to re-record the first panel. Okay, to make the front and the back panel, we are going to start by chaining 22. We'll do a slip knot. And then chaining 22. So I've chained 22 and now I'm gonna add two, which will be my turning chain. Okay, and now we're going to double crochet all the way across, starting in the third loop from the hook. So we got one, two, three, and we're gonna do double crochets. Okay, now we've reached the end and we're going to chain two at the end and then turn and then double crochet back across. And we're going to keep doing that, uh, double crocheting all the way across, chaining two, turning and double crocheting all the way across until it is the length approximately of your torso. So you want it to be from like your collarbone 
to wherever you want it to hit on your stomach if you want to be more cropped or longer. So let's uh, let's do that. Double crochets all the way. Dory, do you think you could move so I could I could finish my video? And then we can go upstairs and paddle. Sorry, baby. Okay, this is my panel. It is 18 rows long and it's about the length of my torso. So now we're going to start doing the short rows for the neckline. So now we're at the end of the row. We're gonna do our two chains in the end and it's gonna be super easy. One and two. Okay, we've got our two and now we're going to turn our work. So now we're working in short rows to form the collar. Okay, so we're going to start with four double crochets. So we're gonna continue the pattern like normal, but only do it for four. So one, two, three, and four. Once we've done the fourth double, we're now going to do a half double into the next one. And then for the next one, we're going to do just a single crochet. Okay, so we did our four double, one half double, and one single. And now we're going to chain one, and we're going to turn. Now you're going to skip that chain, and you're also going to skip that single crochet you did. So we're skipping this chain, and the single crochet, and then into this half double crochet, we're doing a single crochet. And then into the next stitch, we're doing our half double crochet. And then the last three stitches, we're going to do a regular double crochet. Okay, so that's going to be all that we're doing for the neckline shaping and then it's going to be, the ribbing is going to sort of shape it a little bit more. So we're just gonna go back and do double crochets into the three first three stitches until we get a length that it's going to be long enough to like go over your shoulder. So that's three double crochets, chain two again and turn. It's gonna look a little wonky because I had to change yarn again, but we're doing three double crochets back. And that's our third one. And you can see that that collar part is starting to form. So we have a sort of, just this little light swoopy at the collar. And then this, to remind you, is going to have ribbing on the side, so it will be thicker on your shoulder than this, but this is sort of how we're going to determine the length and we're going to keep going until it's until it's long enough. These are the accurate crochet measurements that you're here for. Crochet until it, it it's good enough. Okay, that's one side of the neckline and we're going to repeat it on this side. We're going to join yarn to this side so that we can start our short rows. This part done, so now I just need to do the ribbing on both sides and around the collar, and I will show you how I'm going to do that. It's actually turning out, knock on wood, better than I expected so far, so let's uh, do some ribbing. So this is the right-hand panel, so we have the sort of shoulder area here, and we're gonna go all the way down to this bottom, and we're going to attach our working yarn at the end here. So we're gonna pull that loop through and then we're gonna do that and then we'll tighten it down so we've got a loop on our on our hook there 
And now what we're going to do is chain five. Two, three, four, and five. And so now with this, we're going to be working sort of back and forth in rows like this. So back and forth like that, but you can hold it however it feels comfortable for you to hold it. So now we are going to skip the first chain and then do four single crochets all the way across. So one, two, three, four. So skip that first one, single crochet. One, two, three, get that last one. Over. Okay, so now we have that little row of single crochets. And now what we're going to do to move it sort of up this way is slip stitch. So every time we slip stitch, we're going to go, if you can sort of see where those holes are there. So each time we slip stitch, we're gonna go one further. So we start in this first hole, and then my first slip stitch is going to go into the second hole, and then the second slip stitch is gonna go right into that hole. So you basically are skipping skipping uh, groups of vertical, vertical stitches. So it's like hole, vertical stitch, hole, vertical stitch, hole, vertical stitch, hole, vertical stitch, etc. So do a little slip stitch, one in the first one, and then a slip stitch in the second one. And then we're going to chain one. And now we're going to turn it so now we're working back this way. And this is going to be all of the rows from here on out. So into the first stitch, you're going to get both of them and do a regular single crochet. And then in the second stitch, you're going to go into the back loop only, back loop only, and do a single crochet. The third stitch, also back loop only, single crochet. And then you're gonna go through, and that last one, go through both loops on the top and just do a normal single crochet. So now that we've gotten to this end, we're going to do a one chain and flip. So now working back towards the piece, you see we have our four stitches there. So again, a regular single crochet, a back loop only single crochet, a back loop only single crochet, and a regular single crochet. And now we're back at our edge. So we're going to be doing our slip stitches. So we're gonna go, we did the last one in this one. So we're gonna go one space over, slip, and then one space over again and slip. Single crochet, sorry, that's a chain one. <laughs> and turn and heading back again, single crochet, back loop, single crochet, back loop, single crochet, and normal single crochet. Chain one and flip. So now you can just sort of see how we're going back and forth adjacent to that edge there. And we're just gonna keep on doing that. I got my nails done. And I've also almost finished the second panel. Okay, so I've got one full side done and the second side, I'm gonna show you how I finish this off and then we're going to do the collar and then all that's left is attaching them and also weaving in a billion ends. Oops. So, okay. First look at this. This Dory's bed. Hi, Dory. Hi. Okay, now we're at the end, so we're going to slip stitch into this one here slip stitch right into the end here, keeping that tight because that's where we ended that last one. Single crochet. 
And then we'll do our one last row out. And there we go, we are finished that part. Now I'm just going to snippy snip and pull that through. And eventually we'll have to weave all these ends in. But now I've got, what is this? I've got this side done and this side done. So now we're going to work on the collar. So I'll show you the other one, which is done already. Whoop. The other one was under my camera. <laughs> okay, so I have the collar on here like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to start working down these rows. So for these rows that are straight, we're going to do them uh, just as we were doing the ones on the opposite side. They're gonna be exactly the same. And for the curve, it's going to be pretty similar, except we're only gonna do two like passes, like an in, out, in, out on this curve part. So we're going to kind of bunch this together eventually when we're joining it. So it'll it'll be a little more squished together so that it'll, it'll fit the curve better, if that makes sense. It should make sense. We're just gonna do it. Okay, welcome to the curve. So as you can see, I've been doing my double crochets like normal, but if I continue to do them, I'm gonna have like a big chunky section here. So we're gonna want like a one crochet here that's gonna cover this whole corner. So instead of just slip stitching one over, we're going to go two over this time. So this is where I am last, this is one, and then this is two. So I'm skipping one whole one and slip stitching. And then I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm gonna skip one and slip stitch into the next one. This will make this part tighter while keeping this part, um, sorry, this will make this part wider while keeping this part uh, skinnier so it'll be like, like a triangle so it'll go around the corner. So it might feel like it's like a big gap to go from here back to here, but that's what we're going to do. And it'll be fine. I don't know if you can hear that, my cat is back. And now we're headed back towards the body again and you can see that it sort of made this curve and we're going to do that one more time. Oops, I forgot to chain. Hi Dory. I'm kind of in the <laughs> middle of something. Are you being helpful or are you, uh, are you a little in the way? It's gonna be hard for me to show them what I'm doing. You want pets, okay. <laughs> you can't lay down on top of the project. Or I'm in the, <laughs> I'm in the middle. <sighs> okay. Okay. You're gonna leave? Thank you, buddy. Okay, where even was I? Okay, right, chain one, and <laughs> now I've turned and I'm heading back towards the collar again. So we got a single crochet, back loop, single crochet, back loop, single crochet, single crochet. And then just like we did on the last one, instead of going one over for the slip stitches, we're going to go two. So I'm in there, I go one, and I'm gonna skip over to two, slip stitch, skip over one, go to two, slip stitch. 
then we're going to continue and this should give us get us right around that curve if you're finding it still too curvy you can do that skip again so this one is looking pretty good yeah I think we should be able to get away with just going into the one and the two and now we'll do this as the regular stitch along here until we get to the corner again and then we'll do those doubles and finish up just as we did with the other side so I will meet you I will meet you there okay so I have both panels done so we have the sort of grayish panel here I've got all the sides ribbed and the color ribbed and we've got the cream panel also done here sides and collar ribbed so now I'm just gonna go through and attach them at the top here just at the shoulders so I'm just gonna do like a simple like back and forth stitch it's not gonna be anything fancy then I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to make sure it fits and then I'm gonna attach uh, I think maybe just some ribbons on the side I think if I knit uh, side ties they would be too too thick so I'm gonna see what I have that I can put on there and then uh, hopefully it'll be done and I will show it off tomorrow when I put on a cute outfit that this will go with um, and not my winter basement clothing because it's not gonna look cute with this so almost done we will see you tomorrow for the finished product Okay, I have completed my first ever wearable garment with no pattern at all. And I'm honestly so excited about it that I came out of the basement to come show it off because it deserves better than the basement. It deserves sunlight and actual light. So, ta-da, here it is. So I really am impressed with myself, honestly, especially with the neckline because I was not sure how I would achieve this circular sort of scoopy neckline um, and the answer is short rows and then the answer to everything is finishing it off with ribbing because that makes it look so much more polished and clean and beautiful and so I've got this lovely gray side and then I've got the side on the back the oatmeal sort of side and I did end up doing crochet ties I did one in the oatmeal color and one in the gray color and I just did I chained 90 and then did a single crochet into each one. And I kind of like, I kept them, I could have pressed them, but I like how they're kind of curly and it makes it, um, what's the word? Coquette, bows, cuteness. I like it. <laughs> so yeah, it's super cozy. I like where it hits. This is sort of where my, my skirt is and that's like a high-waisted. And so it's just like, just below high-waisted, which is what I like because I feel like that makes my legs look longer because I have a short, I have a short I am I am short uh, so I really enjoy this sort of this length right here honestly super happy with how everything turned out I'm going to I was gonna say I'm gonna put a pattern for this in the comments it's not gonna be like a pattern pattern I'm just gonna tell you what I did because I have no experience creating patterns especially ones that like you can then change into different sizes like I made this for me and if you're good at crochet then you can totally probably look at that and make one in your own size but um that's not a skill i have yet i'm always working on skills so okay i hope you loved this project as much as i do if you want to see more projects from me uh subscribe here on youtube and also go follow me on instagram and dm me on there and let's be uh let's be buddies okay we'll catch you in the next one Bye bye
Dory, the people want to know. Please state your, your words. That's important info to know.